Good day everyone, I am Nessa Jane E. Tabiaras and I will going to continue our group discussion which is the module 9. And my topic is all about first tips to avoid plagiarism. So why we need to avoid plagiarism? So first, it is unethical because it is a form of thief. By what? by faking other people's ideas and words and pretending that they are yours. You are stealing other people's intellectual property. So Turnitin.com suggests some techniques to avoid plagiarism that teacher, researcher, and student should know. So first, read and understand the original document several times before start explaining about it. So avoiding plagiarism is much easier if you focus on developing a unique point of view rather than relaying on your source to make all the points for you. Therefore, instead of simply stitching together various sources, try to synthesize information so you can create something new. So in reading and understanding the original document, it can help you to know First, what the point the author is trying to make and how does it differ from the other sources you are using and how do they all relate to the point you are trying to make. Second, do not copy any word or sentence from the original documents. Instead of repeating the thoughts or words of the source, explore what you had to say. Ask yourself what unique perspective you can contribute in writing that is entirely your. So, remember if you imply ideas or words from the source to express your own opinion, you still need to apply this tip to avoid plagiarism. Third, give proper citation to all sources such as book, journal, website, video, and etc. So when referring to ideas or wording that are not your own, please include a citation in your writing, including the full name of the source, the date of publication, and any other citation elements required by your style guide. Or, in case of citing online sources, include the retrieval date and appropriate URL in the reference. So in citing online sources, we can use the MLA style. It is a work cited entry for a web page, list the author names, the title of the page, the name of the site, and the date of publication. So fifth, Common phrases and definition need to be quoted and cited without any modification. So one of the easiest but most obvious ways to avoid plagiarism if you insert sources verbatim in your writing is to use quotation marks around the text to indicate that the words are not your own. So direct citation should also cite the source so the reader knows who the citation came from. So for 6, make a practice to include the reference section whenever you write an academic document. So referencing allow us to acknowledge the contributions of other writers and researchers in our work and respect their intellectual property. It's also to make it clear which thoughts are yours and which are someone else. For 7, Cross-verify all your citation before submitting your document. So it is very important for us to check all the citation to show our readers that we have done a proper research by listing sources that we use to get information and of course to avoid plagiarism. So for last, resort to available plagiarism software to ensure the originality of the written document. So while doing research on a topic, 
some phrases may stick to us that we inadvertently include them in our writing without citing them. So, when in doubt, using online plagiarism checker can help us spot those issues before submitting our work. So, we all know that Grammarly also offer a plagiarism checker that scans our text for borrowed content for free. So, these tools can let us know if our article is partially plagiarized and some even highlight specific words or sentences of interest and determine the source of the text. So, now let's proceed to our second topic which all about how to evaluate a website. So, Morris 2018 suggests ways on evaluating a website as reference in research. So, the first thing that the student need to do is open a site. When looking through Google search result, you may want to teach students to open sites in a new tab, leaving their search result in a tab for easy access later. So, the next is Kim read the site and determine whether you can read and understand the text. So, if it's too complicated or difficult to understand, find another website. Decide whether this is the sort of the site that might provide you with the information you are looking for. And the third, look for the answer to your question. So here, if you think the site might prove useful, you need to find out if the information on the site actually answer your question. You stop scheming and read more closely to see if this information is useful to you. So for the fourth, consider the credibility of the author or website. So, if the information is there, you need to consider the credibility of the author or website. So, here's some things you can look for on the website. First, we have the domain. So, sometimes domains that include .gov or .edu, it is come from more trustworthy education and government sources. So, for the author's information, look at the author bio or about page to know how qualified is this person. And third, we have the design. For the design, we can judge a book or a website by its cover. But, it, uh, but sites that are cluttered, it is difficult to navigate or look a much risk may be worth avoiding. And next, we have the sources. So, sources, we should find a trustworthy articles, articles usually linked to other sources or site where their facts come from. And for the fifth uh, ways of evaluating a site is consider, consider the purpose of the site. So, the next step is to think about the purpose of the site and whether it meets your needs. And for the six, look for the date. So finally, it is important to consider whether the information is current enough for your topic. You can look for when the article was written or might tell you when it was last updated. So for our next topic, it is all about integrating digital cyber literacy in the curriculum. So, the following are suggested activities to integrate digital literacy, higher order thinking, and construction of meaning in the classroom. So, first, use an interactive whiteboard to design and deliver lesson. So, we can use a Promethean and smart notebook with teacher-created lesson if you are not yet capable of designing your own. And second, you should allow students to maintain blogs, wikis, web pages related to their learning. So for third, engage in email video chat exchanges with students. Fourth, utilize storytelling media to allow students to create and publish stories. And for the fifth, 
set up blog site, Facebook page, Yahoo or Google group and post weekly discussion question for students to respond. 6. Use video camera to dramatize stories, record scientific experiment and expose students to video editing software to create video production of learning. Also, engage students in discussion about how and why various media work well to showcase learning and why others do not. 8. Thinking critically about the medium used to present a message is as important as the message itself. For the 9. Require effort for you that would compile their outputs, project, messages, and photo documents of group activities and investi uh, investigation outline. And for the last, allow students to use digital tools such as mobile phone, iPad, and notebook, a netbook for Google search, and dictionary apps, YouTube, podcast, Spotify, application in class to complement their learning, especially during group words and concept reporting. Now, let's talk about impact of integrating digital literacy in the classroom on teachers, families, and friends. So first, it motivates students in their learning due to their enjoyment and ease of use with various technological mediums. Second, it refers students various learning styles and multiple intelligence. And also, it allows students to create and design their own unique products reflective of their personality and learning needs and style. It encourages students to manipulate media in constructing their own meaning and it enables students to share their learning with teacher, families, and friends. And friends, and lastly, it gives students the chance to explore technological media that inevitably um, increase the job skills needed in the workforce. So that's all for my topic. Thank you for listening. Bye.